welcome everyone back to the channel. My name's Paul, I'm a very happy member of CA, and as always, I'm delighted to have been joined by Anthony. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Anthony, I'm a grateful member of uh, Cocaine Anonymous, and uh, it's always an honour and a pleasure to come on these podcasts and uh, hopefully carry this message to the still suffering in and out of the rooms. Yeah, I just want to say for anyone that's new or still still struggling with drug addiction, please check out the broadcasts on each of the 12 steps. Um, there's broadcasts on the ABCs of addiction, the spiritual malady. Uh, there's one that's an introduction to CA program steps and fellowship. So if that's you, please check out those. Uh, at the moment, we're now almost halfway through a series on the 12 traditions and the 12 traditions are for the health and well-being of any 12-step group, just as the 12 steps are for the health and well-being of the individual. So without further ado, I just want to say, uh, please feel free to get involved. We're not spokesmen uh, for Cocaine Anonymous. We're just members sharing our experience. So please do reach out um, and get involved in the conversation. If you'd like to add anything to, uh, to what we're discussing, please do. There's a lot of help available during this. Um, hang on, Anthony, we're having some kind of technical um, thing going on here. We are. Oh, yeah. So during this podcast, there'll be information about how to attend meetings, both face to face and online. Um, bear in mind, you can pause and rewind this broadcast at any point. Mm -hmm. So shall we do what we usually do, Anthony, and go through the traditions thus far before we read our portion for today on this one i think so yeah it's just a quick recap right all yours okay i'll start us off the first edition our common welfare should come first personal recovery depends upon ca unity tradition two for our group purpose there is but one ultimate authority a loving god as he may express himself in our group conscience, our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. The third tradition, the only requirement for CA membership is the desire to stop using. Each group should be autonomous, except in matters affecting other groups or CA as a whole. The fifth tradition, each group has but one primary purpose to carry its message to the alcoholic who still suffers. And that brings us to today's topic, the sixth tradition. A CA group ought never endorse, finance or lend the CA name to any related facility or outside enterprise, lest problems of money, property and prestige divert us from our primary purpose. So that's the topic of today's broadcast, family. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name's Paul, and we usually read, we've got this illustrated guide to the uh, 12 traditions, which is often quite interesting and evocative with the cartoon imagery. Um, and so this one doesn't let us down. You can see the two mountains on the right of affiliation uh, and getting involved in any activity that would harm CA as a whole. Uh, and the chap wearing two hats at the top there um what do you think of the graphics anthony i like the imagery i like the graphics and i like the way it's describing it you know and uh you know the guy there in the middle saying look controversy and then uh what i think we should do is maybe enlarge uh on this elaborate on it read the readings and then go back to the main <clears throat> okay so so there appears to be about four paragraphs so if we do two each do you want to do the first two i will yeah i'll kick us off the related facility may be an outside a bigger, Anthony. hold on hold on there we go there we go okay yep good morning family my name's anthony i'm a recovered alcoholic addict and a grateful member of a uh, cocaine anonymous the related facility may be an outside group combating alcoholism or an enterprise that aa want to start it was all the latter that most often confronted the young fellowship outside agencies were pretty scarce in those days 
and some members thought AA should cover the whole alcoholism field, led by the super promoter, as the 12 and 12 describes him. One group built an all-purpose centre, including a section for drying out treatment. Picture any group tackling such a project. Arguments over cost, agriculture, staff, fees, medication and rules might even make the local paper and pity the poor newcomer straying into the group. We'll get around to you in a minute. Though the ambition sense have failed, some individual members have since founded successful clubhouses, rest farms, halfway houses, etc. The enterprises are run by these AAs and patronised by other members of prospective me members or prospective members, sorry, but money and property are involved. Therefore, it has been proved wise to keep the operation of the facility completely separate from that of any AA group and to keep AA or terms like 12 step out of the name. Pass on. Toward outside agencies dealing with alcoholism, the AA policy or the CA policy is cooperation, but not affiliation. The group cooperates, for example, by welcoming referrals from clinics or by sponsoring AA groups into institutions. But in one area, money for a rehab was solicited at an AA meeting, implying affiliation. In another year, AA was listed among beneficiaries of a United Fund drive. AA members or CA members employed by outside agencies wear two hats, but Tradition 6 cautions any such members against wearing both at once. On the job, they may be alcoholism counsellors. They are not AA counsellors. At meetings, they're just AAs or AA members, CA members, not alcoholism experts. So what do you make of that, Anthony? Well, you know, I think this tradition, you know, was put in place to, to keep the integrity, you know, and uh, maintain the primary spiritual aim of the 12 step program and to not endorse any outside organizations or causes, you know, as it says. And it says the related facility may be an outside group combating alcoholism or enterprise that AA wants to start, but it was the latter that most often confronted the young fellowship. You know, so a few of them come in with ideas, as it says here, outside agencies were pretty scarce in those days. And some members thought AA should cover the whole alcoholism field led by a super promoter. So some of them come in with the ideas of wanting to make money, right, out, 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 out of this, you know, but as we know that you can't mix materialism with spirituality, it just don't work. Right, you know, as it, as it, you know, as, as the earlier traditions cover, as well, and it says uh, one group built an all-purpose centre, including sections of drying out treatment. Picture any group tackling such a project. So you can imagine, you know, it tells us we're going to get, you know, you can imagine the chaos that was happening there. That you know, people being driven by ego, poverty prestige you know and uh, yeah. it says arguments over costs, agriculture, staff fees, medication and rules might even make the local paper and pity the poor newcomer straying into the group. Right. We'll get around to you in a minute. Right. You know? I think as well, you know, I mean, it, it's primary purpose, isn't it? You know, we, we, each group is fully self-supporting with one primary purpose to carry the message, um, the principle of anonymity, um, full, full autonomy, um, and we, it, it's sort of like just the sobriety, physical sobriety and emotional sobriety are the prime things for the recovering individual. The group's prime focus is being a successful vehicle simply to carry that message, you know, and it's not worldly success as look, oh, we've got our own meeting rooms or, or, or we've got this new advertisement going on ITV or, or CNN. <laughs> You know, we, we just go on quietly with a primary purpose. And it's quite interesting to look at the ethos and the process of the traditions. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my experience around this in, 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 in recent times, I remember 
Um, there was a chap and a coincidence of mine and, and he wanted us to have uh, something called breakout rooms, uh, which is not traditionally 12 step recovery at all. Um, and it turns out that he himself had started selling 12 steps of sponsorship and support online. <laughs> And he, he was campaigning for us to have these breakout rooms and he wanted to be the man that took people in there. And it all comes out in the wash, doesn't it? Because a little bit later, as I say, you know, it started becoming common knowledge and you could see the website where he was selling 12-step support. Well, we don't do that. We don't do that. Conversely, I remember one young chap nearly two years ago now asked me the upfront question, can he get clean without paying thousands of going into a rehab? And the answer was yes. And in the last... 18, 20 months, he's, he's had three uh, occasions where he's picked up again, three, possibly four, three or four, uh, but he's stayed clean and he's still clean today. He's got months clean today. I was talking to him two day, three days ago. Um, and, you know, so it is possible to get clean without spending a single penny and to, and to stay clean. Um, you know, and I remember um, not only does AA have its experience around this, this exact same thing that we're looking at in this first paragraph. Narcotics Anonymous had the same issue that they wanted to, to, to build. And some of them started doing it, building like an all-in-one rehab and all this kind of thing. And they had to have the same experience of understanding this tradition. Um, you know, and I yeah, think yeah. as well, my, my experience around CA, I'll save that for later. Go on, Anthony, come back in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my experience is I went through a 12-step treatment centre uh, this time round. It's my third time in that uh, therapeutic environment, but it weren't affiliated to AA. You know, problems of money, property and authority may easily divert us, you know, from the primary purpose, which is a spiritual aim. You know, and, and uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, as we've spoke, rightly spoke about, some people wanted to make money out of this thing. And uh, it just couldn't be done. You know, if you look at the common welfare, you know, uh, in tradition one, the diversity and equality in tradition two, you know, uh, the only requirement in tradition three, the autonomy in four, you know, uh, and, 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 and the primary purpose in five, you know, and then we look at this 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 uh, tradition here, and um, you know it's uh it's it's, it's very important uh, that you know this tradition gets adhered to really, because uh, all these traditions intertwine into each other, and uh, and there are there are you know this is why they couldn't affiliate like any you know any groups couldn't affiliate with outside enterprises. Reason being is that that would have diverted us from this primary purpose because people would have start thinking about making money out of it instead of looking at a newcomer to give back with freely I receive freely give back, you know I only keep what I have by giving it away exercising the twelfth step. I'd be looking at a newcomer to make money. That's not right. That's not right at all. The way I, I freely give because I freely receive that generosity of spirit. Right. I just pass on what's freely been passed on to me. Yeah, our, our our reward is seeing folk get well and stay well. You know what I mean? I remember, I, remember I got a phone call the night before last off a lad who I worked with over a year ago now. Great lad, you know, really nice lad. I'm saying a lad, middle-aged bloke. And, uh, you know, my reward is to hear him being well. You know what I mean? Uh, he's still with his in his relationship with his child and his wife and his home, still at home. Uh, employed, uh, in fact, got promotion, doing well, you know, well, that may well have not been the story had there not been a healthy group, you know, with an atmosphere conducive to recovery, where he found fellowship and encouragement and a message of hope, faith and courage. Well, there's four and a half pages in the 12 and 12. Uh, do you fancy starting us off perhaps around a page each? Yeah, go on, I'll kick us off, yeah. Round it off, round it off to the nearest paragraph, right? There's no problem. There you go. Okay. Position six. An AA group ought never endorse finance or lend the AA name to any related facility or outside enterprise, lest problems of money, property and prestige divert us from our primary purpose. The moment we saw that we had an answer for alcoholism, it was reasonable, or so it seemed at the time for us to feel that we might have the answer to a lot of other things. 
the AA groups, many thought, could go into business, might finance any enterprise, whatever, in the total field of alcoholism. In fact, we felt duty bound to throw the whole weight of the AA name behind any meritorious cause. Here are some of the things we dreamed. Hospitals didn't like alcoholics, so we thought we'd build a hospital chain of our own. People needed to be told what alcoholism was, so we'd educate the public. Even rewrite school and medical textbooks. We'd gather up derelicts from skid rows, sort out those who could get well and make it possible for the rest to earn their livelihood in any kind of quarantined confinement. Maybe these places would make large sums of money to carry on our other good works. We seriously thought of rewriting the laws of the land and having declared that alcoholics are sick people, no more would they be jailed. Judges would parole them in our custody, would spill AA into the dark regions of dope addiction and criminality, with formed groups of depressive and paranoid folks. The deeper the neurosis, the better we'd like it. It stood to reason that if alcoholism could be lit, so could any problem. Pass on. It occurred to us that we could take what we had into the factories and cause laborers and capitalists to love each other. Our uncompromising honesty might soon clean up politics with one arm around the shoulder of religion and the other around the shoulder of medicine, we'd resolve their differences. Having learned to live so happily, we'd show everybody else how to. Why, we thought our Society of Alcoholics Anonymous might prove to be the spearhead of a new spiritual advance. We might transform the world. Yes, we have AA did dream those dreams, how natural that was since most alcoholics are bankrupt idealists. Nearly every one of us had wished to do a great good, perform great deeds and embody great ideals. We are all perfectionists who, failing perfection, have gone to the other extreme and settled for the bottle and the blackout. Or the bag and the whiteout. I'm um, providence through AA had brought us within reach of our highest expectations. So why shouldn't we share our way of life with everyone? Whereupon we tried AA hospitals. They all bogged down because you cannot put an AA group into business. Too many busybody cooks spoil the broth. AA groups had their fling at education. And when they began to publicly whoop up the merits of this, or that brand, people became confused. Did AA fix drunks or was it an educational project? Was AA spiritual or was it medical? Was it a reform movement? In consternation, we saw ourselves getting married to all kinds of enterprises, some good and some not so good. Watching alcoholics committed willy-nilly to prisons or asylums, we began to cry, there ought to be a law. It has commenced to thump the tables in legislative committee rooms and agitated for legal reform. That made good newspaper copy. But little else, we saw we'd soon be mired in politics. Even inside AA, we found it imperative to remove the AA name from clubs and 12-step houses. These adventures implanted a deep rooted conviction that in no circumstances could we endorse any related enterprise, no matter how good. We of Alcoholics Anonymous could not be all things to all men, nor should we try. Years ago, this principle of no endorsement was put to a vital test. Some of the great distilling companies proposed to go into the field of alcohol education. It would be a good thing, they believed, for the liquor trade to show a sense of public responsibility. They wanted to say that liquor should be enjoyed, not misused. Hard drinkers ought to slow down, and problem drinkers, alcoholics, should not drink at all. In one of their trade associations, the question arose 
of just how this campaign should be handled. Of course, they would use the resources of radio, press and films to make their points. But what kind of person should head the job? They immediately thought of Alcoholics Anonymous. If they could find a good public relations man in our ranks, why wouldn't he be ideal? He'd certainly know the problem. His connection with AA would be valuable because the fellowship stood high in public favor and had an, an enemy in the world. So they spotted their man, an AA with a necessary experience. Straight away, he appeared at New York's AA headquarters asking, is there anything in our tradition that suggests I shouldn't take a job like this one? The kind of education seems good to me. It is not too controversial. Excuse me. Do you headquarters folk see any bugs in it? At first glance, it did look like a good thing. Then doubt crept in. The association wanted to use our member's full name in all its advertising. He was to be described both as its director of publicity and as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. Of course, there couldn't be the slightest objection if such an association hired an AA member solely because of his public relations ability and his knowledge of alcoholism. But that wasn't the whole story. For in this case, not only was an AA member to break his anonymity at a public level, he was to link the name Alcoholics Anonymous to this particular educational project in the minds of millions. It will be bound to appear that AA was now backing education, liquor trade association style. The minute we saw this compromising fact for what it was, we asked the prospective publicity director how he felt about it. Great guns, he said. Of course, I can't take the job. The ink wouldn't be dry on the first ad before an awful shriek would go up from the dry camp. They'd be out with lanterns looking for a honest AA to plump for their brand of education. AA would land exactly in the middle of the wet-dry controversy. Half the people in this country would think we'd signed up with the dries. The other half would think we'd joined the wets. What a mess. Nevertheless, we pointed out you still have a legal right to take this job. I know that, he said, but this is no time for legalities. Alcoholics Anonymous saved my life and it comes first. I certainly won't be the guy to land AA in big trouble and this would really do it. Concerning endorsements, our friend had said it all. We saw as never before that we could not lend the AA name to any cause other than our own. So that is the reading, Anthony. Um, good stuff. Uh, pretty clear, clear cut. What, what's your thoughts? I'll, I'll scan through these pages. Well, for a few well Paul, you know, you can see the thread of it coming in from the recap of one to five. Now we're on six and what the primary purpose is in what we do, you know, because the early predecessors, you know, it was all trial and error. As we know, the 12 and 12 is an 18 year commentary of collective experience. Right. And then it was published. Uh, you know, and, and, and the 12 steps and 12 traditions, the steps were elaborated and the decisions were put in place because of what was happening. They needed to have, we needed to have these traditions here. You know, in this actual tradition, Paul, you know, it talks about how grandiose and how ego driven people were when they first come in, got sober and clean. You hear it in the rooms. I got a new pair of trainers. I got this, I got that, because the ego reconstructs, the ego gets smashed. You know, a kernel of wheat must die before it can grow. We were all drove here by circumstance, not by virtue. And what happens is we get a few days sober and clean, you know, and 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 then and then the ego starts reconstructing. Now, this, you know, these traditions, this the steps deflate the ego, as we know, and the traditions are an ego, keep the ego deflated as well to keep the group there as a whole so we can serve. So we're there to serve the newcomer coming through the door or the threshold or logging into a Zoom meeting. We're there to be there to serve them. And our primary purpose is 
that we do that from a spiritual point of view and not from a, a materialistic or a game point of view. So this is why AA could not, or CA or NA or any other fellowship can't facilitate with any outside enterprises because what would happen is, as it said, it said that at the end of the reading as well, that it would blow the guy's anonymity for one. It, you know, it'd bring the, the wet and dry camp controversy you know, you know, and then too many, there'd be too many cooks and too many cooks spoil the broth. You know, so, it, it, you know, we know that it is a safe haven in, in, in the 12 step fellowship where we're like minded people, we recover because we identify that power of identification, you know, identifying the problem, identifying the solution, and then identifying what needs to be done through the literature, through the big, uh, through the big book and the 12 and 12 to put the action in. Right. And then these traditions, especially this tradition as well, it's put in place to actually show us what our primary purpose is, you know, and uh, you look at that reading and what they actually wanted to do that they, they, they really thought that because they discovered or, or it's been revealed to them a solution, they thought they could, you know, uh, Many a call, but few had chosen. They thought they could, you know, go co co cover everything. And, and as we know, on the back of the big book, you know, how many other A's have come about there, you know, I mean, but at that stage of the game, when this was published, you know, they had to adhere to these, we have to adhere to these principles, but they had to put this in stone to say, look, it's, as we know, it's uh, the traditions were put in place as guidelines, you know, and if, if, if too many people from other camps got involved, it could just disperse the whole fellowship because people could, there wouldn't be no trust there, you know, and, and that's what people need to know that when they come to the rooms or log in to a Zoom meeting, that they, they can trust. Do you know what I mean? They can share stuff that they wouldn't share with other people or they can share it with their sponsors or, and, and also carry this, our primary purpose is to carry this message, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, its primary purpose, I mean, the individual's primary purpose is to stay sober, both physically and emotionally. Um, and the sobriety of the group is important as well. You know, to realise that wherever money comes into the equation, you said it at the beginning of our conversation, Anthony, uh, problems come around. It, it, it's the same in the history of business the history of even temperance societies that have been around for hundreds of years, you know, societies of folks that commend abstinence, um, you know, and, and of course, spiritual movements, and still very much is, you know, you don't need to look very far to, to, to you know, to groups professing faith and trust in God, where money has come in and things have gone wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong with money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Um, and I think it's it's a very liberating thing to be clear of that for a start off, you know, to completely remove. And, and indeed, it says it there at the book, towards the bottom of that page, large sums of money. You see, so wherever you if you can put money out of the equation when it comes to a 12 step group, you're already well on the way there. That that deals with a huge issue, you know, and that's one of the big issues. And then, of course, you have influence and pride and desire for prominence and things like that. But I wanted to mention something just to bring this up to the modern era. Something that 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 that, that perhaps will will is yet to be written down and contemplated, um, that wasn't around at, at the time of this writing. It's interesting, Anthony. You, you mentioned the collective experience of eighteen years gathered in the twelve and twelve, and you and I, you know, are, are big proponents of, of the twelve and twelve. It, it is indeed a phenomenal book. In fact, in my opinion, it's up there in the top four or five ever recovery books going. It really is that good. And indeed, that's what's on the screen right now. And just for any of our listeners that want to read the rest of the 12 and 12, the 12 steps, the 12 traditions, you can read it completely free anytime or listen to it completely free at aa.org. Um, now, in the modern era, Anthony, you and I, well, indeed, we're, we're on Zoom right now, aren't we? You know, we're on a Zoom meeting right now. Um, and so to some degree, Anthony, you and I, are involved with combining the CA name with Zoom, whether we like it or not, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so that's an interesting dynamic right there. 
uh, you you know this podcast will be posted in various places i'll be i'll be posting it on skype in, in skype ca groups uh, i'll be posting it on youtube uh, i'll be posting it on whatsapp i'll be posting it on in the rooms.com you see what i mean so so although there's absolutely zero cash involved in any of that from their perspective those uh, businesses, Skype, WhatsApp, Zoom, In The Rooms, YouTube, they are very happy to have us as guests, as it were, on their platforms, in their business model. Um, and so, you know, that in se- itself is, is something we need to be prudent about. And of course, you and I maintain personal anonymity as, we, as we're doing this. You know, no one knows our surnames or where we live or anything like that. Um, so, you know, it is possible to be discreet and prudent while doing that. But I think we do need to be cautious and bear this in mind, um, you know, when it comes to, to modernity. What, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, this message needs to be carried, but it has to be done, you know, in a way where there's no cost. We received, you know, and you know, it's, it's each group, you know, is fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions, and that it will be our next tradition, you know. And 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 what we do, you know, we carry this message, and and the way we carry it is is uh, you know, is is as you just described, and letting people know, you know, there is a solution, and because uh, people, you know, God will work work in mysterious ways. You know, and 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 he worked through us, and 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 then he'll work through to come to get to other people, and uh, and that's where you know I believe that the spirit works, and this this tradition here, it's a it's it's, it's a it's a clever tradition, you know, and uh, because as it says rightly so, these people try to make money, you know. You look at it, it says yes, we of AA did dream those dreams, how natural what that was. Since most alcoholics are bankrupt idolists, you know, so no matter what walk of life people come in from, every addict and alcoholic, just a very low percentage might not have blown all their finances to, to a certain extent, but most would have done. And they come in broke, busted, disgusted, not to be trusted, because I was one of them. That was my experience, you know, full of shame, full of guilt, full of remorse. Start going through the steps, have a spiritual experience, have a spiritual awakening. The ego starts reconstructing. And then I can start thinking a bit grandiose then, thinking, oh, I could make money out of this. You know, because Bill Wilson actually wanted to try and make a bit of money out of it. You know, and, uh, but, you know, as we, as we rightly see in Tradition 2, the group said no. Uh, and we can't mix materialism with uh, spirituality and God spoke through the group. And, uh, you know, so this tradition, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great tradition. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I realised today, you know, some people come in and fair play to them. You know, they might want to gain financially, getting back into getting, you know, pre-recovery, they were broke, you know, post-recovery. Now, you know, they, 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 they want to, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. But as long as you don't mix that with what you've been freely given, you know, you've received something. I've received something from my own experience that I didn't really deserve. But I know no matter how far down the scale I've gone, my experience is there to benefit others. But it's got to be done, you know, from a a spiritual perspective and not from a materialistic perspective as an individual. And, and, And that goes towards the group as well. It has to adhere to what we do. And this is why these traditions were put in place. Well, that's right. Absolutely. And, you know, everything's by grace and mercy. You know what I mean? 8,000 million living humans are sustained in pure grace and pure mercy, the atmosphere, the planets. And each group, he says in the concepts, is a spiritual entity that God maintains that exists before God. You know, and, and, and that, you know, that includes our home groups that we attend regularly. You know, and, and I think the idea is is just to maintain a healthy balance, you know, primary purpose, self-supporting, fully autonomous um, unity, you know, under one supreme authority, one supreme authority, the he, 
the hymn in step 11, having had, uh, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for the knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Well, that's what the group does, and that's what tradition too is. You know, there's but one supreme authority, one ultimate authority, a loving God, as he expresses himself in our group conscience. And, you know, it's the power of a support network for the sobriety of the individual and the power of staying connected with all the other members in the group conscience means that we arrive at, at wise decisions for the group. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really good for, for emotional maturity to look back at the history of 12-step recovery and see the things that they went through and learn from it. Um, you know, and, and I mentioned Narcotics Anonymous earlier. They've got a book called It Works, How and Why. I've got it here. I've mentioned it to you before, Anthony. And it's a phenomenal book. It is the 12 and 12 of, of NA. Um, and they've got a good number of pages on this tradition as well. And as I said, they, they're much older than CA. They, they had their own experiences around this tradition in the 50s and 60s, building rehabs. They even went as far as to, when I say they, members uh, went as far as to build uh, rehabs and things like this and, and buy buildings and have things on various floors, which I think you and I read about in one of the previous uh, traditions or discussed. And so, you know, I think as well, spiritually speaking, uh, Anthony, you know, looking at the idea of the individual and how this tradition, you know, you and I have often mentioned how many of the traditions we can, we can find personal application for our lives with, can't we, as well? You know, and certainly this one's no different, you know, working with others every day we've got to be cautious and realize that what we're about is abstinence uh, and solution to alcoholism. You know, we're not a synagogue, we're not bank managers, marriage counselors, psychiatrists or doctors. We will direct people to where they can get all that kind of thing, but we deal with alcoholism, the problem and recovery, the solution. So I think it's really important to bear that in mind, you know, um, and we do get it. We do get a lot of persons with lots of problems, don't we? And it, it mentions it there. Um, let me see if I can find it. Persons with a lot of neurosis and depression come along to our groups, and and that is the case. But that doesn't mean we we need to morph into mental health counsellors. Now, don't don't misunderstand me. People get a lot of help for all those kinds of things as a result of drawing near to God, um, and and you know, having commitment to personal faith and trust and spiritual literature and a support network and step work, they do. You know, minds, bodies, employability, finances all improve. Um, but I think it's the idea of primary purpose. Absolutely, I totally agree. Leave the professional work to the professionals and we do what we do here. And, and you know, if you look at, you know, you even got people in the celebrity world who have kind of donated towards doing recovery stuff, but it's not affiliated, but a signpost, as you rightly said, you know, and, 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 you know, the literature's there for the person in treatment. So, you know, when you get out, attend, you know, AA, NA, CA, GA, you know, whatever A it might be. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and these traditions were put in place. To, to, to we're there we're not here to make money out of it we're fully self-supporting you know and and anyone else who is capitalized on it cannot affiliate not capitalized because the aa name can't be put to it but they might be a 12-step treatment center you know you get different methods in treatment centers cbt so you know the one i went through was 12-step based in cbt run along each other but because of the h and i people coming in to carry the message and let them know that we're there, you know, when they leave, you know, you know, and that's where your 90 and 90 is getting promoted and, you know, get yourself a sponsor, do the four suggested things and, you know, get yourself a book, you know, and, 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 and would advise you to get someone who's a sponsor, who's armed with the facts, get yourself a home group, you know, uh, and, and and start doing some service and working the steps, you know, and 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 and, and, and that's it. 
Do you know what I mean? But nothing can be affiliated to this in, in respects of material or property. You know, our primary purpose is to just be here to carry this message and to serve. And we do that because we freely receive and we're fully self-supporting as a whole, you know, and uh, so it's and it, it's great as well, you know, that uh, one addict reaching out to the other, that therapeutic value, you know, where two or three are gathered, that power of identification, you know, the triangle, God's at the top, the prospects on the left, the newcomers on the left, and the person who's a little bit further on, the other addict who's a little bit further on up the road is on the right, you know, and, and, and that magic happens there. That's where the, you know, sharing experience, strength and hope, you know, and going through the literature. And we do that because we've received this gift and we want to give back, but we reap what we sow. And in that process, you know, our spiritual bank starts getting filled, not our financial. It might do. God might, you know, bless, but it's about the spiritual bank as well. Because I don't want to use or booze again. And, you know, and I don't want to use heroin, crack, cocaine, prescription drugs, alcohol or party drugs. I've got to get, I knew that was just a part of the symptoms. I get down to causes and conditions and by adhering to the steps, traditions, and I don't really indulge into the concepts, but I think they're great for committee level. You know, these 36 principles we've got here, you know, are fantastic. And they derive their spiritual principles. They derive from a spiritual book, which is the big, big, big book, the Bible. And uh, it's just fantastic. Thank God. I think I think the great thing is uh, beautiful, Anthony, as always. And, you know, the great thing is transparency, accountability, devotion to a new way of living. If I'm transparent with you about my consequences of active addiction, Anthony, right, that's the consequences there. Right. And we have what something we call the yet, the yet, what could still happen yet. You know, so, so if anyone's listening to this, you know, it is possible to get clean and stay clean and have a better life. You know, what we really have is a commitment to abstinence and God's power and grace. Um, as long as we maintain a fit spiritual condition um, and walk in that grace and that mercy. And I think it all has to do with that transparency and accountability. You know, the power of identification in the problem. Uh, step one, the power of identification in the solution. You know, I mean, uh, you know, persons that want to maintain a sane and sober lifestyle, uh, it, we know how it works. In fact, you and I know precisely how it works, Anthony, and we spent hours discussing it. You know, and I would heartily commend perhaps anyone new to check out the broadcast on this channel. I think there's around 45 now. There's one on the spiritual malady, the ABCs of addiction. Um, there's 12 on each of the 12 steps. In fact, there's two on step one and two on step two now. There's lots of information. We've got about eight or nine personal stories, a few anniversary shares. Uh, and indeed, there's lots of other information on YouTube as well. Uh, but I would heartily suggest anyone that's struggling with addiction, that wants a new life, to come along to some meetings. Now, if you're in Britain, if you was to go to cocaineanonymous.org.uk, which is the web address at the top on the screen there, you would get a list of UK face-to-face -face meetings that you can go to. Um, you would also get a list there of online meetings, Zoom meetings. And on the screen is a list of meetings. All the ones in blue are on every single day. So up at the top left there underneath the pink box, you've got the Breakfast Club, 7.30 every morning. Great Gratitude, 9.30. Pop-up recovery, 10.30. We can recover at the top left, 2 p.m. We can recover at 8 p.m. Over to the top right, daily reprieve every night, 9.30. These are all UK times, reaching out at 11, Tazana at midnight. In the centre, lower down, there's two ladies' meetings that are on every day, 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. So please get involved. Don't be put off going to a Zoom meeting thinking you'll need to put your camera on. Only about a fifth of attendees do so. Nor feel that you'll, uh, you know, you'll be obliged to put your, your microphone on. Again, you're very welcome to listen. Conversely, it'd be great to hear from you. So please reach out, stay connected, stay safe. Anthony, pleasure as always. Yeah, I just want to come back in, and, and I love what you're sure. talking about transparency, and transparency, you know, transmittable and, and, and accountability, because the principles of responsibility slash accountability, right, so if I'm unaccountable, I need to be accountable. If I'm reactive, I need to be proactive. If I'm uncentered, I need to be censored. If I'm in that victim mode, 
I need to lead by example not by mandate leader if i'm dysfunctional i need to become functional if i'm fearful i need to become loving and courageous if i'm codependent i need to become interdependent and if i am in that mode of i blame others for the way i think feel and behave you made me think like that you hurt my feelings you embarrassed me you caused me to do that I need to take responsibility for my thoughts, thinking, my feelings, emotions, my behaviours and my actions. And if I take responsibility for others, I try to change other people's thoughts, feelings, actions by people pleasing, enabling, protecting, micromanaging, manipulation, over controlling, martyring and bullying behaviours. I need to take responsibility to be effective, to sponsor, mentor, leader, teacher parent spouse employer friend partner and trusted servant and this is what this program starts teaching us to do you know and it's fantastic you know that this program has helped so many people so if you've got any lurking notions or reservations you know and you think you can beat the game alone our hats are off to you because there's no other solution bar working this program to overcome a terrifying drug habit or alcoholism i'll leave it there yeah so please come along to a meeting that was beautiful anthony you know we know precisely how it works uh you can find a new way to live um you know and, and have a better future so please come along to a meeting get some literature get into the step work anthony thanks so much for coming along okay family until next time stay safe stay strong